Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. We're back with Dr. Jorge Gomez, assistant professor of medicine at the University of Miami and co-leader of thoracic oncology. Now we're going to discuss the management of limited stage small cell lung cancer. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, let's assume a patient that has had a biopsy of a lung mass which has come back positive for small cell lung cancer. Please explain how you would know it's limited stage and what the treatment is. So, when we first find a tumor, and specifically a small cell lung cancer, we finish what we call the staging, uh, which is to do a lot of tests to find out how far the tumor has gone from the original site. In this type of disease, we would do a CAT scan of the chest, we would perform an MRI of the brain, and we would do a PET scan. Um, those tests will tell us usually if there's disease outside or if there's anything suspicious outside of the chest. If there's nothing suspicious outside of the chest, then we would call the disease limited stage disease. How would you treat that? The treatment of limited stage disease is fairly straightforward. Um, and the reason is that patients can be cured with certain treatments. And so we tend not to stray outside of those treatments. Um, the best possible treatment for limited stage disease is concurrent chemotherapy and radiation, which means we do the chemotherapy and the radiation at the same time. We don't necessarily have to start them at the same time, uh, but we should start the radiation as early as possible in the course of chemotherapy. We'll get to that in a second, but just patients always want to know, can they, patients always ask us, doctor, can you please cut this out? Can, is there a role for surgery in limited stage small cell lung cancer? There is a limited role for surgery in limited stage disease. Um, we will uh, occasionally find uh, a tumor because we've operated a small nodule mm -hmm. that turns out to be small cell lung cancer and then we will treat it as a small cell lung cancer rather than a non-small cell lung cancer. Um, but there isn't a very clear role. So you can resect small tumors, early stage tumors that are very small, uh, and then treat patients with chemotherapy, uh, but again, there's no large body of evidence to suggest that it's any better than doing uh, chemotherapy and radiation. I see, okay. So going back to the chemo radiation, how is the radiation therapy administered? What should the patient expect? <clears throat> so radiation therapy is uh, complex, but uh, simple in terms of administering. Uh, patients get radiation once a day, every day, for anywhere between five and six weeks, although there are patients who we will treat with radiation therapy twice a day uh, to shorten their period of treatment, their length of treatment. And how would you administer a chemotherapy concurrently with radiation? Now the chemotherapy for small cell lung cancer that we typically use is a combination of two drugs. One of them is platinum, like the metal, and the other is another drug called etoposide. Uh, that drug is administered this combination is administered in three consecutive days. Mm -hmm. And so we do that once every three weeks. So you get three days of chemotherapy, three weeks later you get another three days of chemotherapy, and we do that four times. And what we try to do is to put the radiation, the five or six weeks of radiation, into those 12 weeks of treatment. Does the patient need to be admitted to the hospital for this, or no? All of, these pay, all of these treatments are usually done as an outpatient. These are not very complicated chemotherapies. Um, they, they can almost always be done as an outpatient. What side effects should the patient experience, expect? The side <coughs> effects for this type of chemotherapy are fairly typical. Uh -huh. uh, the same side effects for other chemotherapies such as hair loss, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, uh, which are really the, the minor side effects. And then some of the major side effects which include decrease in white blood cells with the possibility of infections, and usually kidney, uh, kidney failure, not a full kidney failure, but kidney toxicity. Mm -hmm. But in general, this chemotherapy is usually fairly well tolerated without a lot of severe side effects. How would you address the nausea and vomiting if, they, if it did occur? We actually address nausea and vomiting before it occurs. Before we give the chemotherapies, we give a lot of pre-medications to prevent nausea and vomiting and we always send patients home with prescriptions for nausea, one, two, or sometimes three drugs, depending on how much nausea usually happens with the regimen. So we start before we give the chemotherapy, and then we give patients tools to take home that they can use as needed when they have nausea. Uh, should the patients change their diet while they're undergoing this treatment? Sometimes patients 
will change their diet for several different reasons. Mm -hmm. First, chemotherapy can often produce lack of appetite, and so patients uh, suffer big changes because of that. Uh, chemotherapy can also produce changes in taste, mm -hmm. and so patients will not eat certain foods because they taste a little bit strange, they have metallic tastes. Patients don't necessarily have to change their diet for this type of chemotherapy. There are no foods that you should not eat. You should follow the same rules you would usually follow, which is to wash all fruits and vegetables well, um, not eat a lot of raw. Patients should always exercise, especially patients with lung cancer. Uh, it's very important that they maintain their activity levels so that they don't lose them. Uh, it's very, we see very frequently in patients who are hospitalized for three, four, or five days. When they leave the hospital, they're very, very weak, and it takes them weeks to recover back to their old levels of functioning. So exercise is very important. And the best exercise for a patient with lung cancer is probably walking. I see. And the patients that are working, can they continue to work while undergoing this treatment? Some patients will be able to tolerate this chemotherapy with very little in terms of side effects. Uh, we have many patients who work full time during their chemotherapy. We don't suggest that people do because sometimes people are, are fairly tired, uh, but it is possible. And it really depends on the overall health of the patient. Patients who are healthier and younger are much more able to do things like working full time during treatment. I see. What about sexual relations with a partner? What are your recommendations when receiving chemotherapy or radiation? It's important to maintain a normal life when you're diagnosed with cancer and when you're getting chemotherapy. It is, however, very important to, uh, for men to wear a condom uh, during sexual relations. Uh, in general, patients with lung cancer are not young enough to get pregnant, but that can sometimes happen. Um, but it's important also for, for uh, the chemotherapy aspect. So always have some form of barrier protection. I see. How do you deal with depression in patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer? Depression is common in all types of cancers uh, and, and, and a lot in lung cancer. And so oncologists are usually very quick to treat patients with depression. And so we do two things. We treat patients ourselves with antidepressants mm -hmm. and we refer patients to one of our counseling centers uh, very easily. A lot of patients don't want to go, but mm -hmm. we firmly believe that some form of therapy uh, is very important for all patients diagnosed with cancer to help them cope with all of these new and different issues. I agree. What about recommendations for spouses or children of patients with small cell lung cancer? I think spouses and children and, and parents of p patients with lung cancer or any cancer uh, also suffer. They also suffer significantly uh, almost as much as the patients do. and. Mm -hmm. Therapy as a group or individual therapy is also extremely helpful for those patients, for those people. I see. Now there's a new wave of treatments in cancer called biologics. Are there currently any biologics that you would recommend for small cell lung cancer? There are no biologics that are used as a standard part of the small, cancer, small cell lung cancer therapy. But there's a lot of research into biologicals in small cell lung cancer. Uh, there are many clinical trials and participating in a clinical trial is a first treatment um, is sometimes a good idea as long as it includes the standard treatment uh, compared to, let's say, the standard treatment plus a new drug or a biological. I see. <clears throat> you mentioned earlier that small cell lung cancer does like to go to the brain. There are times when you guys administer prophylactic radiation to the brain, if, even if there's no cancer in the brain. Would you please explain what the reason behind that is? So for all patients who have limited stage disease, and for most patients who have extensive stage disease who actually have a very good response to chemotherapy, we recommend prophylactic radiation to the brain. What that does is it decreases the likelihood of having the cancer come back by about 50%. So it cuts it in half, come back in the brain. Um, this uh, cancer very commonly comes back in the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, this type of rapidly growing cancer in the brain can often cause severe life-threatening symptoms, uh, it can often cause hospitalizations, uh, it can cause terrible morbidity. And so we treat it up front rather than waiting until the cancer comes back. Uh, and we have found that it, it actually improves survival. Now in, in patients that do end up living a long time with limited stage small cell lung cancer, are there any side effects with receiving radiation to the brain? There are some toxicities from whole brain radiation. 
there is a cognitive deficit that um, in trials has been measured. Um, so those are things that really do need to be discussed with radiation oncologists before the treatment. But the uh, improvement in survival is so significant that pretty much all patients who have a good response should really have it. Okay. What do you tell your patients regarding the odds of curing someone with limited stage small cell lung cancer? In general, uh, patients with small cell lung cancer can be cured. We probably cure about 20% of those patients. Um, so although that doesn't sound like a very large number, that's actually a, a pretty good number for such an aggressive disease. And I think from us patients, what patients want the most is hope. How do you give your patients hope with limited stage small cell lung cancer? Well, I think the first thing is that we discussed we discussed the, the possibility of cure, and mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that patients want to hear. Mm -hmm. Can I be cured? Mm -hmm. And the answer for those patients is always yes. As long as we do the best possible treatment for each individual patient. And so what patients can do to improve their chances of cure is to really stick to the regimen that's being offered and, and, and do everything that they can, and that would include concurrent chemotherapy and radiation, mm -hmm. and would include the brain radiation. Mm -hmm. And when you finish the concurrent chemo radiation, do you administer more chemotherapy afterwards or no? Well, it depends on how you've gotten the chemotherapy. The radiation usually lasts only five to six weeks, and, and if you do it twice a day, it's even shorter. Mm -hmm. The chemotherapy, if you give four cycles of chemotherapy, will last about 12 weeks, some people actually like to give six cycles of chemotherapy, which adds another six weeks to the treatment. Um, and so you will often just put the radiation in somewhere into the chemotherapy, and you'll have chemotherapy before and after, usually. I see. And then how do you follow your, follow your patients once they've completed treatment? <clears throat> when you've completed treatment for limited small cell lung cancer with both chemoradiation of the chest and brain radiation, we will usually do uh, CAT scans of the chest. Uh, in the first year, every three to four months. In the second year, every four to six mm -hmm. months. And then after the second year, about once a year after that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.